Hello, good morning and welcome back to the fish locker out on the shore. I have took myself underneath these trees just because right now it is absolutely pouring down with rain. <laughs> I've been out with the van about five minutes and I wish I'd put all my waterproofs on. Yeah. Today we're going foraging. I'm going foraging along a piece of shore. We have got very large spring tides, so what I'm going to be doing is as soon as this is all died off, I'm going to go for a little bit of a walk down along the low tide line and see what I can find. Okay. Um, I've mentioned this in a few videos before, but if, you are, if you're coming to a new area shot and you don't really know what's going to be there, if, if you're exploring a new area and you want to know what you're likely to find down around the low tide line, the best place that you can look is the high tide line. So looking around up here, just for two minutes, I immediately I can see that in this area we're going to have cockles, mussels, there's a hard shell clam, limpets, what else have we got? There is part of a Pacific rock oyster, all number of periwinkles. We've got surf clams, we've got little, right, we've got that's a purple top shell, king cockles, oh, queenie scallops, surf clam, yeah. So you immediately after being only, only five minutes I know roughly what species I'm likely to encounter down there because when they live down there and they die they get washed up up here. Yeah. I'm going to stick my waterproof coat on and we're going to get going. But yeah we have we have around about two hours of the ebb left so two hours of the tide going out. I'm going to follow it right down to the low tide line and just look about and see what I can find. Yeah. We're looking for shellfish today. There is a lovely little variegated scallop and that is part of an invasive Pacific rock oyster. Beautiful. <laughs> Those are two European flat oysters and that is an invasive Pacific rock oyster. See the difference between them? There's one. There's one. Perfect. See? These Pacific rock oysters really are quite ornate, aren't they, when they get going? Yeah. That's a good size one. Yeah, look. Now, for me personally, those are a little bit too small. That is the size I want to be taking. This size and bigger. You've got orange sponge, look. Here are some little clusters of mussels and you see how they all kind of cling together with those little anchors called a byssus. I spin you around so that the camera's not looking into the, <laughs> into the rain because the camera's just going to get covered in water. Yeah, we're still quite high up on the tide line here. So these things up here, I know that I can forage these on the way back because these are going to be exposed for the longest amount of time. Whereas the low tide line is going to be exposed for the least amount of time. So I'm going to head down there. This is a really good sign. I'm happy to find that. If we can find some of these today, I will be over the moon. We're getting warmer. Yeah, it's thrashing it down. In case you haven't gathered, it is absolutely tipping it down. Yeah, typical, isn't it? <laughs> all I'm doing now is I'm just looking along all these little 
cracks and crevices because there are some absolutely stunning sea anemones. Now those are Dahlia anemone. No, I, I really like, sorry, I really like Dahlia anemones. Not only because they're, they're all unique, they're really pretty, but their Latin name is Urtikina felina. And I just think that's, that's really cool. There's another Dahlia's anemone. We've got all sorts in here, we've got all types of sponge, we've got some uh, painted top shells, some sea squirts, look. You can see why they're called sea squirts, look, watch. <laughs> Oh, oh. Yes, yes. I know what's happened here. Did you see then that it was kind of rolling around? This little piece, of, this little piece of seaweed here has been its downfall because the waves and the tide have dragged it in with that bit of weed. Fantastic. Oh, and it's a beautiful size as well. Oh, it's a cracker. I'm happy with that. Yep. I think we've got another one here. Oh, same again. How big is that one? Oh, just big enough. Yeah, what's happened there with them? Yeah. I'm just going to get wet. <laughs> There's no point trying to hide it. I'm just going to get wet. Yeah. What's happened with these is those little pieces of seaweed there. You can see this. We've got quite a bit of bad weather at the minute. You can tell by the, the rest of the conditions. But all the turbulence, all the waves and that, I've obviously picked them up and dragged them and dragged them and dragged them. Those little pieces of weed have acted like a sail, dragged them right to shore. So looking in all these little areas like this, this is obviously they've got washed all the way. I'm just stuck at this reef. So yeah, I've got some cockles, two scallops, and a pair of reading glasses. They've been in there a while, look, see, they've got barnacles on the lenses. I'll quickly run through some of your seaweeds. You've got, that's Irish moss, you've got sea lettuce, your dulls, your pepper dulls, your bunny ears, the pom pom weed. Look, what stacks. All these little white worms here are called keel worms. And all the bright white is the new growth. It's just a little worm, a little polychaete worm that lives inside a calcium shell. <laughs> when I'm out on the shore like this, I do usually opt for wearing wellies. I am really glad that I'm wearing waders today because it's going to be a wet day. Oh, there's one. Oh, come on, be full, be full, be full. Oh, you beauty. That is a, that is a, that is a monster. How thick is that? That is a massive, that's a massive scallop. And again, bits of seaweed on it. Yes! Oh, I'll tell you what, that's put a spring in my step. I'm sorry that I'm not able to do as much talking as I would like about all the different things that I'm seeing. But microphones don't like the rain. So yeah, I'm just having to put it away in my pocket and when I find something specific I'll talk to you about it. Like this here. This dead crab. Now if you're walking along the beach and you find a load of dead crabs, don't immediately think, oh no, well it's something that must have died, because crabs, lobsters, all crustaceans, they shed their shells. So this guy here, if his back opens up, like I think it's going to, there look, see he's completely empty. So this crab hasn't actually died, he's shed out of his old shell, discarded it, and he's somewhere else, somewhere alive, somewhere slightly bigger, hardening up a new shell. So yeah, all they leave behind, 
is their gills and their hard shell. So you sometimes see them on the beach and they're completely opened up and hollow. And that's what's happened. It's not a crab that's died. It's just shed off his old shell. I have found another one here. And again, it looks like the seaweed because it's got... This is rainbow rack. You can see how it's brightly coloured. Green and purple and blue. As soon as you bring it out, it's now... Yeah, look, there. And he's got a dogfish egg stuck on it. So, exactly as I said before, he's been down somewhere down there, and this seaweed here, the, the waves and the splashing and everything has carried him. You can see how much of a drag it's got on him. All that bit of seaweed. And it's washed it all the way up the side of this reef. Where there's, actually, there's some more. There's a... There's a queenie scallop, and there's a rock oyster. So yeah, there's another one, and this one with a dog egg. He's also got that is a hunchback scallop, and those are slipper limpets. In need of a haircut, isn't it? This rain ain't stopping. We are getting up to low water now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start heading back, but as I am, I'm walking about, just looking in these little patches of water here to see if there's any more of these scallop washed up. Because that's what you're looking for, just these little fronds like that. I've just been dragging them in, haven't they? it like I tell you what that is probably bang on the minimum landing size yeah that one for me is just a fraction too small yeah slightly too small Find it in a couple of years. Looking on this rock here, there is a little cowrie. Oh, I just love this. There's two types you get. There's an Arctic or a common. And the only way you can tell the difference, they're both the same size, they're both roughly the same color. But one of them's got spots on it. And I can't tell if these have got really faint spots on it. I'll put a picture in here to show you the difference between the two. A little tiny cowrie. The amount of life that's just growing on the sides of these rocks here, look. We've got a strawberries anemone. I don't know what type of anemone that one is. There's a dahlia's anemone down there. That there is a type of nudie branch, there's a type of sea slug. All the different types of sponges and weeds and Look at this one here. I've just turned round from having a look at that. And look what's jammed underneath that rock there. Is it a full one? Oh, I tell you what, actually, that's. No, it's still in there. It's taken a bat, that one. It's, it's got a breakage in it. Yeah, it's still in there. It's still, still tight. Hmm. Result. Here are a couple of special things. You see those two there? That one and that one. Those are sea lemons. They're sea slugs. They're a species of nudie branch. And this below it is a green leaf worm. Now these are breeding at this time of year. And in loads of spots I'm finding, see all these here? There and there. There, in fact, is a sea lemon laying them. Yeah, look. Uh, don't get wet. Yeah, so these guys. See if I can just dislodge it slightly. There, look. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to leave it because they're entangled. <laughs> Sorry, mate. 
in the middle of the deed. Sorry, my mistake. Hmm. Maybe just carry on. But yeah, they're breeding this time of year. And that's what's making all them. Here on this rock are more of those nudie branch eggs, you see? Well, it looks like under the water. In fact, I'll put a picture in here. It looks just like a rose when it's under the water. And all these little marine polyps. Yeah, these sea squirts are everywhere. Got your thongweed, you see lettuce. But more of those nudie branch eggs. Now these areas here aren't uncovered on a normal tide. It's only because this is a really large tide that all these are uncovered. The tide would probably only usually come down to about here. Oh, come on, out you come. Oh, <laughs> I think we have a winner. I think we have a winner. Yeah, that one was wedged right in there. What an absolute monster that is. And it's raining even harder now. This is getting quite difficult now because I'm running out of dry places to dry the lens on, like now. And here, here is quite a large variegated scallop. Now they don't get any bigger than that. I'm actually, I'm going to take this one, so I'm going to show you the comparison between these and those. Yeah. I am very wet. Another one. Just too small. Right, I think I've spotted one. You can just to say see it there. I'm gonna get a wet arm. Yeah, but we have a winner. We have a winner. Oh, it's a beauty as well. I've already got a wet arm, might as well. Oh look. A little baby one. We have another one here. I just see something there attached to this weed. <laughs> what have we got? Oh no, it's an oyster. Oh, <laughs> that's what you're looking for anyway. In fact, I'll do him a favour and I'll take that seaweed off. There you go. Do him a favour. Another one. Oh, in fact, that one would be, yeah, too small. Almost, but not quite. Is that another one there? No. Oh, I think that's the smallest one yet. Found one here. Look at that one. That is just an absolute stunner. Bright pink. Oh, checking that. This here is quite interesting. This is a sea hare. Now, that is like a large sea slug. You see its antennas there, look, on the front. Yeah, this is a sea hare. I'm gonna take him back down to the water and let him in. But uh, yeah, this is, about, this is about medium size. They do grow to be like three times this size. And when they get real knocked off, like when someone attacks them, well, <laughs> probably like now, they secrete like a bright pink dye. 
There, look. There, look. You see that purple dye on my hand now? But yeah, that. That is a sea hair. You, know, you see all the purple dye coming out? My fingers. That's a sea hair. I am absolutely drenched, but I am over the moon. That is a fantastic haul. I am amazed by this one, that little pinky there. I have never seen one as purple as that. And that one there is just an absolute monster. We've got a nice little haul of cockles. Now, I went out foraging on the shore yesterday and I got a load of mussels. I'm going to put the cockles with the mussels and the scots. I'm not going to do a beach cook up today for obvious reasons. <laughs> Get myself back to the van. Get, um, I haven't even got a change of clothes in the van. Get back home and get dry. But yeah, they are amazing. Found loads of little tiny ones, like around about this size, which is a fantastic sign for the future. Yeah. Well, we have managed to find a little bit of sunshine. Just a little bit, haven't we? Yeah. What's the weather been like the last few days? Bye. Bad. A lot of rain, a lot of wind. Hopefully today we've got a little window, we've got like a three hour window. So I've brought some of the scallops. I've brought some of the scallops down and James and I are going to hopefully cook some up on a bed of coals. Yeah. The other ones I'm going to take round to my father-in-law's, I'm going to take them round to Jim's. Just as a little bit of a, a thank you for everything he does for us. So yeah, at the moment, we're trying to do everything double quick. James, he's axe man, aren't you? Where's your axe? Yep. All we're going to use is we're just using little bits of offcuts from projects that we've got in a fish locker workshop. We're going to build up a bed of coals and we're going to shuck these scallops off in a second and we're going to cook them on there. That's the plan. All before the rains start again. <laughs> While the fire is burning down to make a bed of coals, I'm going to shook off these scallops. Now all I did was I just brought brought five down because it's only me and James. But I did bring the little queenies that I also collected. So we'll show you about cooking these. Um, shucking normal scallops, king scallops, they've got a flat side and a round side. Queenies or variegated scallops, I've just got two round sides. So all I'm going to do with these is I'm going to just going to drop them by the coals and let them pop themselves, and then we'll pick the meat out. Yeah, they're, they're really simple to do. All you need a decent a well, decent flat edge, decent flat edge knife. And all you do is you kind of go in at one side like that. You're going to slide the knife in because inside of here, underneath, I'll show you this one. Inside of here, underneath there, there is going to be like a disc of muscle, and it's connected to this flat edge. So you're going to slide in the side and your knife's just going to slide along the inside and separate the muscle from this shell and the lid's going to lift off. Now all I'm doing is I'm just going in the inside and just separating the muscle from the top of the shell. The top comes off and there is your scallop. There's that white disc that I was talking about and this part here, that very vivid orange and white there that's the row, that's the coral. Now you can tell the sex scallops, all scallops have got the potential to be hermaphrodites, being that they've got, more, <laughs> they've got both male and female. The way that you can tell a male is the white part of this, and the way you can tell a female is the orange part. So if it's got more orange than white, it's a female. And if it's got more white than orange, it's male. And all you do is you reach in, reach in behind the black part which is the stomach contents and you just lift it all out. Now ideally this shawl should come out in a wanna. There. Fill was stuck in tight. Leaving leaving behind the disc of muscle. Now that is perfect. That is in its own little cooking dish. That's gonna go on the fire like that. What I'll do is I will separate off I will separate off this bright orange and white row here and I'll cook that too. 
because when it's full, when it's, when it's really vivid like this, it is worth keeping. Sometimes if you catch them just after they've spawned, it can be almost see-through and spent. It's not really any good. So yeah, that will be getting cooked as well. Do you want to come and add a little bit more wood to the fire, best boy? Yeah. I'll get the rest of these done now, and then we'll get back to you. We are almost, <laughs> almost like we know what we're doing. We've got a nice bed of coals building up behind me, keeping my backside warm. And we have finished prepping the scallops. Now what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put a little bit of butter in each of the dishes. And which ones do you want to eat, James? That one and that one. You want to eat the two small ones? Yeah. Okay, well if you don't like the orange, I'll have the orange. Yeah. But I'm going to put a little bit of hot sauce in my three. Is that alright? Yeah. Yeah. And these ones, we'll figure out how to cook these ones. I've only ever cooked them before when I've, I've cooked them inside of like uh, clams. And I'll just put them in, scrub them and then put them in a pan. So these, I think we're just going to have to stick them, stick them to the side and when they pop, stick a little bit of butter in there with them. Yeah, those those corals are really really vivid, aren't they? You want to do the butter, are you? Yeah. Okie dokie. Yeah, that's a nice nice bed of coals. What I'll do is I'll flatten that out a little bit and then we'll put the scallop dishes on them. Right, scoop it off. That is a perfect job, well done. So we have a little bit of butter and some hot sauce in man. Flatten the coals off. We'll get cooking. Yeah. When I say that these have been on the fire for literally a minute it was just enough time for me to pop those little tiny scorch off and you can see how hot it is. Now they'll let you know when they're ready to be turned because they separate from the shell. So all I'm going to go is just teasing them like this. You can see how the colour's changing on top of it. I'm going to put a camera down and we'll use two hands to turn them over but they'll be ready to come off in a minute. Yeah, they don't take no time at all. If I said that those scopes have been on there for two minutes it would be an exaggeration. Just long enough for me to be able to shuck them two little ones. I'll flip them over and they're ready to come off. God, I tell you what, that fire got hot. They've, they've done, they've fully cooked in like I say less than two minutes. Let's get them off. <laughs> <laughs> Spent 30 seconds thinking, quick, I need to get my gloves out. Couldn't find my gloves anywhere. So yeah, one or two of those are a little tiny bit overdone. I have to work out how to get them off the fire now without my gloves. Right, there you go. Oh no, it's starting to rain. Come on then, get them down us. with that. Oh no. It's proper raining now, isn't it? One of my favourite things to do as well is to take a bit of bread and just to mop up all the, the butter and the, the chilli sauce juice. <laughs> Well, we got the cooking done, didn't we, before it started raining? Almost timed it just right. It does? Yep. <sighs> like that, it's cooked absolutely perfectly. Now 
that as well, that coral there. Now they haven't got a lot of texture to them. It's not like the, the scallop which is like a chunk of mussel. That roe, I actually like that one, it's overcooked so it's a little bit chewier. Yeah, just as, just as I was in the process of turning them over to try and video it, a family come past. A, a man carrying a baby and like a load of people and started talking to me so I had to turn the camera off. That's when it got real tricky. That's when it got real tricky. Um, that. Could be my favourite bit that. You smashed yours already. <laughs> Try and show you that properly. Perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Another wonderful thing about cooking like this, that's it. The scallop shells were the dishes that we cooked them in. It just sits on the fire like that and works like its own little frying pan. And the scallop lets you know when it's time to turn it over because it comes it comes unstuck from the shell. So I just just kind of teased it with a stick like that until I could see that it was it was it had come unstuck and then flip them over and then they're ready. We'll chuck all these in the sea when we've finished having our marshmallows. What did you just say then? When we throw all this, when we throw all the shells in the sea, what? So all the little shrimps and prawns and things and like gobies can eat all the things we didn't eat. Exactly. Exactly. Where did you learn that? You. Good. Paying attention, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Chuck all the shells in, and all the little bits of. I'll show you. This is all the bits of frill that was left. Now you can't, if we were going to take that home, we could have made the stock out of that. But it's just, it's just as good to return it to the ecosystem. So all we'll do is we'll take it down to the low tide line. When we throw all the shells in, we'll throw that in as well. And as James says, all the crew, as James says, all the crabs and blennies and gobies can have a pick through and they can have a feed too, can't they? Oh, April fools. That was a close one then. We nearly didn't have any marshmallows. Now these are good ones. Are you ready? Are you steady? Yeah. Here's your stick. Let's get toasting. Well that there, to me, is pretty close to perfect. How are you getting on? Good. <laughs> <Try. laughs> Alright, rain started and you can see it is, it's pouring down over there, so yeah, it's coming. Hopefully we'll get a chance to knock a couple of these back before it happens. I hope you enjoyed joining us, I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later. <laughs>